to us with a smile on your face that probably summarizes how good this night has been for yourself but could you put it into words about the goal and also the performance yeah it's perfect uh, we wanted to give something back to the fans today and i think uh, we did it uh, we played so well uh, we created a lot and didn't give away a lot so yeah it's a perfect night for us when you think about the atmosphere in here and you think about obviously your move to the club and nights like this exactly what you meant when you turned man and said that you wanted to join Arsenal Football Club. Yeah, of course. That's why, why you play football for, for nights like this. Uh, the crowd has been incredible. Uh, and like I said, we wanted to so uh, give something back to them and it's, yeah, it's a, a great win for us. It seemed like the whole night started, especially for the Arsenal fans, when you scored your first goal. Just tell us about the movement and the tempo in terms of what led to that goal. Yeah, when I saw Georgi on the ball, I, I just knew he would put it in behind for B, and I, uh, I had to be there in front of goal, and yeah, B put it on a plate for me, and uh, I had to score it. So it's a great, uh, great team goal, and uh, yeah, it set us off uh, for the rest of the game. Going into this, everyone was talking about the versatility of one of your teammates, Tommy Asu, but maybe we should talk about the versatility yourself. Whether it's on the wing or in the false nine position, you seem to be thriving. What is it about your game where you can just excel in any position? Um, I think my biggest quality is that I uh, can go on both feet, so it's, uh, it's easier for me if I play inside or on the wing, it doesn't really matter for me. So, um, yeah, I've always played in multiple positions during my uh, career, so uh, it helps me a lot. I think we always want to know from your perspective, when the fans are screaming your name, when you were came in off, there was a, a loud, loud, loud of applause in here for you, screaming Leo, Leo, Leo. How does that make you feel? What does that quantify? How does that make you feel in terms of your relationship with the club? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, like I said, that's where you do it for. Um, you want to give something back and then it's nice uh, if they appreciate it and uh, yeah, if they uh, shout your name. I've had the stats man in my ear tell me say to me, it's one point you need now from your to close out. Is that the objective now? How do you make sure that happens? Now we want to win both, uh, both games and that's how we will approach it. So uh, yeah, we, we, next uh, thing is home game against Lons and we want to win that as well. Well, Liam, more than anything else, congratulations, my friend, and top man for the goal. Martin, Martin and Rio are just next to me, and uh, I, I don't know if you can see that Rio looks in, really uh, quite incredibly annoyed, and that's because he's got one eye on Manchester United's performance as well, who were two on that. Rashford got sent off, and they just conceded. Now he feels that they might concede again. Anyway, meanwhile, more importantly here at the Emirates, Arsenal really dominating this game from start to finish, and that Trossard goal, bearing in mind that he's come in because they're missing players up front, Eddie and Ketcher, Gabriel Jesus as well. This was a lovely ball from Jorginho, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, the vision that he has here, of course, Declan wins the ball, first of all, lovely ball, way to pass, into the path of Saka. Saka and Martinelli have been absolutely different class in this mm. first half. But look, look at this, Declan's got to win the ball, that's why he's in there. And then he passes it to this man who really can play, can't he? Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of players that here, like you see it, you see this pass and you see the, the, the lane open up but there's very few that can actually execute. This is why he's here, he's passing range here. The, the, the timing of the run, the pass execution, the weight of the pass, and then Saka with a beautiful ball on the plate for Trossard, who I think is, Trossard's a real, real, really good player. And today I think he's been very bright and it's a fantastic team goal, that. Yeah. Trossard's been clever because he keeps offering himself from side to side, get yes. those passes moving, and then he's there at the vital time mm -hmm. to uh, knock that one home. Another player looks like he's really enjoying himself in that first half is Gabriel Martinelli, who's absolutely Whoa. been shining, hasn't he? Whoa, he the has right had, back's had a nightmare against he, him. He's had Juan Lu on mm. toast. He's roasted him. <laughs> Every time he's had the ball, he said, listen, what have you got? And you ain't got enough for me. He worked out in the first couple of minutes of the game, beat him once here. And from that moment on, he just said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hurt you. And I don't think he would have had a harder 45 minutes of football in his career. Young, young fullback. He's been linked with Real Madrid, funnily enough, and this will be a good le learning curve for him. Can he recover in the second half? Because Martinelli, all he's done is he's, he's lacked that killer final ball. This is the worst one, isn't it, from a defender's oh, point of view? Oh, Berber top Old Trafford. That's, that's almost embarrassing. But it, Martinelli keeps knocking it out with his right foot. I mean, look, we'll just take another look at this. Lovely, it lifts oh. it over the defender. Uh, that is embarrassing for him. He must have a good agent to be linked with Real Madrid because he's getting run ragged. <laughs> But Martinelli and Saka, they're the shining lights and have been at Arsenal for two yeah. or three seasons now, and tonight they're tearing them apart. Yeah. Uh, he's been dribbled past five times in the game so far, so in the second half he's got to do something to try and mitigate the, the Gabriel um, danger, I suppose. Um, but you're right, Saka as well having a brilliant game, more to come in the second half. Just all round from this side, considering the injuries and everything that I had to contend with, Arsenal were in the driving seat from the off in this game. They might have had a little bit of switch off, perhaps they took the foot off the gas in the second half, but they got the goal in the end. It was a lovely goal from Saka. 
Overall, how do you think it went, Martin, for you? I think it was a very good night. I think Arsenal now looking like they belong in the Champions League again, once more totally dominant tonight. Their opponent not having a shot on goal until the 96 minutes, says it all, really. Um, and again, the leading lights are the youngsters, Martinelli, Saka. I um, mean, mm. Saka's goal was a, a wonderful finish for him, the defender. We've not seen some very good defending here tonight. We, mm. We've talked a lot about oh. defending and been surprised, actually, at Seville how poor they were. But nonetheless, Arsenal mm. totally dominant. They're growing with experience. Declan Rice, they're, mm -hmm. they're all playing in the Champions League for the first time now. Have a look at this. This is Saka for the 2-0. Mm. Lovely bit of skill. No, doing what Saka, because in the last couple of weeks, we've said he's been a little bit quiet, Rio. Yeah, he has. But he, listen, he's been in, in, in ridiculous form for a long period of time now for such a, a young, young player. Mm. He, he, this defender should never be allowing him back on his left foot. If he's if he's watched any videos of Saka, he'll be saying, right, I'm going to show you down the line, you can't come back inside, but the trickery, he fools him. There's no real disguise. No, but it's, it's a nice turn, he's sharp and it's a fantastic yeah. finish. Oh, yeah, but he always wants that left foot. Yeah. Keep him going that way, young defenders, but great for Saka. He does that so many so often, comes onto his left foot and then just tucks it away nicely. It's a little bit like, I'm not saying anything like he's anything anywhere near Robin yet, but I'm saying there's certain players that you, they, they always want to get onto a certain side, which is his left side, and you can't stop them. You know it's coming, yeah. Yeah. but they're, they're so good at disguising and, and, and trickery that they managed to get it onto that left foot and he done that again today. Now Arsenal's top scorer with six goals so far this season. Disappointing scenes if you're, if you're Mikel Arteta and Arsenal fans as well. Like he mm. did land awkwardly. Have a little look at this. This eventually forced him off. Innocuous. I don't, only... think, I don't think he rolls it though, does he? I think maybe he just sort of maybe blocks. He jars you know, sometimes it you can jar it, mm. and, it and, you, and you get that congestion at the back of your ankle. I'm hoping he's going to be OK. He's quite a tough boy, you have to say. Yeah. But he does get um, a lot of injuries. We might have. Um, I was wondering, actually, why he wasn't going off earlier, yeah. do you know, because you want to wrap him in cotton wool. But I'm mm. certain he'll be OK. Well, the good news is, when he came off, he didn't go to the medical room. He went to the bench and he carried on watching the game. And at full time, he was still walking around. So, fingers crossed, it means it's not that serious. Um, he was heavily involved today. He also got himself an assist for the first goal. Mm. Let's have a look at uh, Leandro Trossard's goal. This made it 1-0 in the end. Um, and we talk about that ball from Jorginho. It was lovely, wasn't it, Rio? Yeah, a fantastic ball. I think everything about this goal was great. Declan Rice picks up the loose ball there, goes into Jorginho, his midfield partner. He finally gets it back. But watch, watch Saka's movement here. We're going to get it better on the next clip, but it's a great ball, a wonderful ball. The vision and the execution, the ability to play that ball, yeah. let alone see it. But this bit here, I think you've got to keep your eyes on, on, on Saka, haven't you, Martin? Well, it, what's really clever about it is he's, he's just going to move out wide and just find his position. He just moves into an area. And look, this is the vision now, just looking. He's just surveying there, Jorginho. And then the change of direction, look, woof, puts the weight on his back foot, pushes up into the space. And then there's the deliver delivery, and it's just a tap in. Trossard, though, has watched all of that happen and read it really well to be in the right place. They have a lovely relationship, Trossard and Saka. We looked into this. Trossard's five goals that he scored this season have all been assisted from Saka. And if you go back to last season, he scored one goal there also assisted for Saka. So two of them obviously work very well. Well, they're almost <laughs> telepathic, aren't they? Yeah, I'd be wanting it's every incredible. single one of my dinners and desserts delivered by, <laughs> by Trossard if I, if I was Saka. I'm telling you, I, I'd be saying, no, no, come on, yeah. I want, I'm yeah. setting you up on the pitch, I want setting up off it. Always comes down to food <laughs> with you, really. Yeah, that's a big problem of mine. <laughs> uh, listen, overall, Martinelli obviously didn't get on the, on the score sheet, but his influence in this game was huge and the right-back's mm. probably going to have nightmares about this for the rest of his life. Yeah, the, the, the two fullbacks were put under immense pressure today, and, and it, this this will be a learning curve for this young full, fullback. Does he learn from this? Well, what well, you said at, at half time, can he recover? Well, he didn't. He, he got destroyed all game. Every time Martinelli had the ball, he looked like he was sitting there in just a submission and saying, "Listen, I know you're going to beat me. I'm just going to try and keep up with you and just try and make myself not look as bad." Each and every time you get the ball, this is like, woof. You have, to just, you have to acknowledge the skill there as well. Yeah, though. I mean, it, the thing is, is, he's got to give himself half a yard. And it, it, what's, that, what's really intelligent for Martinelli is knocking it out with his right foot and then running onto it with his left. So he's out of the stride pattern of the fullback, and the fullback just didn't know what was going on. It's, there it is again, time after time after time. It was, it was a little bit embarrassing, but as a, as a centre-half, I think I might have gone alongside him and mm. said, oh, come on. Yeah. Let's drop off a little bit. Yeah, you need that experience alongside you. But Martinelli, listen, you want to see these performances. Oh, you want end products, you want goals, you want assists as well. Everything else in his game today was perfect. Yeah. OK, guys, uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to be hearing from the manager, Mikel Arteta, after this very quick break. He'll be really pleased with that performance because we did... In the
أكد رئيس الوزراء البريطاني ريتشي سوناك على وجود خطط لإنشاء هيئة تنظيمية مستقلة لكرة القدم لحماية مستقبل أندية كرة القدم الإنجليزية وذلك خلال خطاب الملك الذي ألقاه الثلاثاء سيكون لديها هيئة تنظيمية مستقلة لكرة القدم قدرة على التدخل والتعاون مع التدفق النقدي بالقضايا التنظيمية الأخرى داخل الأندية والتي يعاني الكثير منها من الضعف المالي وقال الملك تشارلز في خطاب عن مشروع قانون الحكومة كرة القدم سيتم تقديم تشريعات لحماية مستقبل أندية كرة القدم من مصلحة أطراف اللعب والمشجعين ذكرت وثيقة حكومية منفصلة أنها شجت هام كرة القدم الإنجليزية انكشفت في السنوات الأخيرة وأضافت الوثيقة انهيار نادي بوري أحد أندية مدينة مانشستر الإنجليزية والتأثير المدمر للوباء فيروس كورونا على الأندية والخطة الفاشلة دوري السوبر الأوروبي الإنفصالي كشفت جميعا عن عدم الاستدامة المالية لبعض الأندية والحاجة إلى منح المزيد من صورة المحاسبة للجماهير ستقوم الهيئة التنظيمية بتشغيل نظام ترخيص سيتم تطبيقه على مستوى الدوري الخمس الأولى لكرة القدم الإنجليزية للرجال مع القدرة على التعامل مع ضغط قضايا بما في ذلك الالتزام باللوائح المالية وحكومة الشركات وإشراك المشجعين سيتم إجراء اختبارات أكثر سلامة على ملاك الأندية سيتم تقديم الحد الأدنى من معايير مشاركة المشجعين ولن يسمح للأندية بالانضمام إلى الدوريات الإنفصالية أو غير المرخصة ووصفت مجموعة فير جيم الرياضة العادية التي تضم الأندية التي تسعى لتحسين إدارة كرة القدم الإعلان بأنه لحظة تاريخية لكرة القدم قال نيال كوبر رئيس تنفيذ المجموعة في بيان تمثل فرصة حقيقية لإنهاء دائرة الإنفاق الزائد وسوء الإدارة التي أبتلت بها رياضتنا الوطنية وهددت وجود أنديتنا في الوقت العالي تحدق الأندية مثل شيفيلد ونيزداي وريدينغ وسكوندروب يونايتد في الفراغ